في قطاع الحكومة الرقمية ستنقسم الورشة إلى قسمين القسم الأول التي سيتم استعراض السياسة فيها والتي سيقدمها المهندس عبد الرحمن المزوقي مدير إدارة السياسات والبرامج لدى هيئة تنظيم الاتصالات والحكومة الرقمية أما القسم الثاني فسوف يخصص لجميع الاستفسارات من الحضور الكريم للعلم سيتم تسجيل القسم الأول من الورشة فقط لدواعي مشاركتها لاحقا مع الجميع ورفعها على موقع أكاديمية الهيئة خلال الورشة نتمنى من الجميع أن يخلي المايك على الميوت لتفادي أي أي صوت خارج الجلسة إن شاء الله وخلال فترة الأسئلة والأجوبة إن شاء الله بنكون متواجدين في الخدمة إن شاء الله للإجابة على الأسئلة اللي بتشاركونا فيها إن شاء الله الحين أترك المايك حق أخوي عبد الرحمن أشكر أبو السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الصوت واضح نعم واضح بحر طبعا صبحكم الله بالخير حبيت في البداية أعرفكم بنفسي عبد الرحمن المرزوقي مدير إدارة السياسات والبرامج في هيئة تنظيم الاتصالات والحكومة الرقمية قطاع المعلومات والحكومة الرقمية طبعا اليوم بتحدث باللغة الإنجليزية لتسهيل التواصل وايضا شرح المفردات بعض المفردات التقنيه فالسويتش تو انجلش سو ثانك يو ايفري وان فور بينج هير ام فيري ديلايتفول تو بي اولسو هير تو توك اباوت ا فيري امبورتنت سبجكت ذا كلاود اند ذا شيرد ريسبونسبيلتي بوليسي ذات ذا فيتنت كلاود از فولوينج So the, the main purpose of, of, uh, of today's session is to clarify the uh, shared responsibility model, what does it mean, um, and, and the policy that uh, FedNet is uh, coming up with to clarify uh, the, the, the responsibilities uh, in general, whether it's on the customer side, which is the federal entity, or it's on the FedNet uh, side. This hopefully will uh, uh, increase the clarity. Uh, it will increase flexibility and operational uh, efficiency, efficiency, and it will, it will be also a good opportunity for uh, the, the federal entities to evaluate its current uh, responsibilities and place their operational capabilities and a proper uh, resource planning. And it will hopefully uh, also help in timely Uh, identifying and uh, resolving uh, issues. Of course, when we uh, drafted this policy or model, uh, we basically followed the common practice uh, among the cloud providers uh, around the globe. Uh, for example, uh, Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google, Google Cloud, uh, etc. Uh, these companies, they follow a similar uh, approach with the emergence of uh, cloud Uh, usage. So as you know, uh, the, Fed, uh, the FedNet provide various services, uh, mainly uh, driven by the architecture of cloud. For example, you can see here uh, some of the services that uh, perhaps you're aware of. Aware of. For example, uh, email as a service, internet service, infrastructure as a service, like, you know, the typical Uh, VDCs or virtual data centers, uh, the MPLS uh, connectivity, some of the managed services, hosted collaboration as a service, backup as a service, and disaster recovery as a service. And hopefully we'll see more and more cloud services uh, with the emergence of uh, platforms as a service and, and software as a service. Uh, it's important to, uh, to clarify the responsibility Uh, scope um, uh, because, uh, as you know, uh, the cloud concept relieve uh, entities some of the burden of uh, operational uh, uh, and and maintenance burden that you fear that you face as an IT uh, department, and it's very uh, important to assume the right responsibility and also have 
the choice and the flexibility to choose the service based on what responsibility you want to lift from your organization. And when we talk about responsibility, we mean various things. For example, maintenance of the hardware and the software and the platforms, the various controls, uh, configuration, um, uh, managing uh, you know, patching and uh, updating the software, managing compliance, security, monitoring the health. So there are various things that uh, a typical IT administrator have to do when managing uh, uh, a system. And, and within this framework, when we talk about shared responsibility model, these are the responsibilities that we are uh, talking about. Now, in a shared responsibility model, um, in a typical uh, IT uh, uh, infrastructure or IT traditional data center, the customer usually is responsible for everything from the hardware to the network to the operating system, firmwares, uh, applications, security, etc. So he's he's responsible for the entire uh, stack. However, when we move to a cloud environment, uh, there is a split and there are some gray areas in the middle as well. So you'll see that uh, on the right side, the cloud provider is, in, in this case, FedNet, is responsible for some of the aspects, mainly the low level and infrastructure aspects. And the customer is, is, remains responsible for some of the aspects aspect as well. For example, the data, he's, he's always responsible for uh, uh, his own uh, data. However, there are uh, you know, shared responsibilities between the cloud provider and the customer uh, that sits in the middle and it varies depending on what we are talking about. Are we talking about an infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service or a software as a service? So the essence is we are shifting from a traditional model into more and more uh, shared responsibility model. And, and this exists with any cloud provider. So, so in this session, we'll try to focus on high level uh, concept rather than a specific service. And then uh, if you want, uh, you can uh, seek further clarification on, uh, on any of the specific services and, and what exactly is the responsibility, responsibility within that service. Uh, I wanted to give you an analogy, uh, perhaps to make it easier to understand, you know, the difference between uh, having a traditional uh, uh, responsibility versus a shared responsibility uh, uh, model. So in this case, we're presenting here an analogy of PISA as a service. So let's say, for example, if if in, a, in, 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 uh, in one of the options is for you to, you know, uh, prepare the pizza entirely at your home. So in that case, uh, you, you will basically need um, uh, everything to, 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 um, uh, to create that pizza. So in here, for example, you see that you need the cheese, the toppings, the sauce, the dough, uh, the oven, the electricity, uh, prepare the table, etc. I'm sure I made you hungry uh, <laughs> this morning, but the, the point is you would need to manage the entire uh, preparation of that uh, pizza. But then there is other options where you can uh, uh, take, uh, and, uh, for example, here we're talking about um, uh, you, you have to manage only some portion, so you can buy the raw material, for example, but then you will be responsible for uh, uh, other things like, for example, the fire, the oven, and uh, electricity. The third option uh, is uh, for you to actually uh, uh, take uh, the pizza uh, uh, as a delivery, and you will only be responsible for smaller parts. And the last example here, which is a similar analogy to a SaaS, where you're not responsible uh, for uh, uh, anything. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll go to the place and you'll, you'll dine there and everything is prepared 
uh, uh, for you. And, and this is an, a, a similar analogy to when we talk about uh, IT, where on-prem, you're responsible for the entire uh, stack. And here you'll see in the, in the light blue, uh, the customer is responsible for uh, these areas. So in on-prem, he's responsible for everything from physical data center, as, as, as we said before, to the perimeter network, to the physical host, to the virtualization, you know, what virtualization uh, uh, models they want to uh, follow, uh, which operating system they, they would like to choose, with which application, um, and, uh, and of course, uh, application logic, data, and, and user management. In infrastructure as a service, the cloud provider will be responsible for the underlying infrastructure. So here we're talking about physical data center, the physical and, uh, and perimeter network, the, the, the physical hosts, the virtualization platforms. So these areas, FedNet in this case, will be uh, responsible for managing and, and updating and making sure that it's secure and, and up and running and healthy. However, uh, uh, the customer will be responsible for for certain areas. For example, the the instance of the virtual machine and, and how to manage it, the local networking and the operating system, um, uh, the applications that sit on top of it, and etc. In that case, for example, some customers would say, "Well, um, uh, I thought uh, that um, uh, FedNet will take care of." my backups, for example, make sure that there is a, a backup for my virtual machine. But then when that virtual machine hit with a problem, for example, uh, it was unpatched and it was compromised and the data was lost, then the customer, uh, if he's unaware, will come back to the FedNet and will say, where is my backup? I need to run that machine again. And then he'll be surprised that there's no backup because it's not the responsibility of FedNet, for example, in this case, to manage uh, his backup. Separately, there might be a different service where there is a backup as a service that the customer can use to make sure that um, his data is properly uh, uh, backed up. In a PaaS or a SaaS model, we'll see that the customer is, is uh, have less burden uh, by uh, uh, managing uh, only his data and managing only user access uh, 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 management where uh, uh, the application, the OS and local networking is responsibility of the uh, uh, cloud uh, provider. So uh, I, I gave a few examples of where uh, policy application is very important. Uh, for example, here we have some real scenarios that we've seen in the past uh, where customers were affected due to uncertainties or misunderstanding of uh, uh, their uh, responsibilities. Uh, for example, there was an application malfunction and the customer lost uh, some, some, some data. Um, a customer, for example, uh, lost uh, a recent data update due to unscheduled backup. He was unaware that um, um, uh, he was responsible for his own backups. Uh, there was a compromise due to unpatched vulnerability within the customer OS. So basically a customer had a VDC infrastructure as a service, and he has the choice and control over the operating system, um, but he left it unpatched. And then there was uh, a compromise. Then we hear some, some, uh, some, some of them, for example, would say, "Well, there was an, a compromise in, in, in FedNet, but rather it's not a compromise of FedNet. It's a compromise of a system hosted within uh, FedNet, but that was due to customer responsibility. He did not properly uh, 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 patch." Um, Another example is a customer has been impacted due to delay in taking an action to a code identified bug. 
uh, another example, uh, a customer, customer assets hosted within the VTC impacted as there was no firewall configured. So the firewall is there, but it's not properly uh, uh, configured, and hence uh, he ran into uh, uh, security issues. Um, so these these are the examples that we want to hopefully uh, uh, use uh, so that we uh, enhance uh, um, uh, the security and health of the overall uh, uh, system. At the end of the day, we uh, as as a, a digital government want to make sure that uh, federal government entities enjoy an excellent service. Um, and 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 uh, uh, secure uh, uh, systems, and we want to make sure that the responsibility is very clear. Um, now, uh, what we will be going to do, we will distribute uh, the policy, um, uh, which is further detailed than this presentation, and then we would uh, expect uh, the authorities or the federal entities, customers of FedNet to review them and, and, and sign uh, that they understood and reviewed uh, uh, this policy. And, and, and these are could be some of the questions that uh, you might have regarding uh, that policy. Who should sign that policy? Basically, um, a head of IT or head of procurement or, or a sector or someone who's authorized to sign um, within that uh, entity. What is expected from, from entities? Uh, basically acknowledge and evaluate the responsibilities and conduct internal alignments to make sure that there is no gaps. Everything is clear and, and, and properly uh, uh, covered. Of course, they are expected also to evaluate internal operational capabilities and, and resources accordingly and conduct routine uh, uh, checkups on any issues and, and the resolutions in the light, in light of the uh, policy. This is the end of my presentation, and if you have further inquiries or questions, I left uh, email addresses here for the policies access, uh, aspects. You can contact uh, Engineer Mishal Mihiri, uh, and if you have any issue, uh, any questions regarding FedNet services, you can contact uh, Ahmed Salman. Uh, 